Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Welcome back. It's uh, March or April. <laughs> I never even know what month it is anymore, but it's I think it's April 6th today, 5th or 6th. It's Sunday, I know that. But um, uh, today we are going to work on putting the hydraulic pump back together for the H. I know I've said that the last two weeks in a row that we were going to get to it, you know, those weekends, but you know, things have been really crazy around here with, with everything that's going on. And um, we had a, a pretty good medical scare with our daughter this last week. She's fine, so thankfully. Um, but before we get started on the, the hydraulic pump, I wanted to uh, both show you what I did one day last week, which was I rebuilt the carburetor for the F20, took it over to Rudy's and did a full rebuild on it. That was much needed and much overdue. Uh, I, had, I had done kind of a um, garage uh, or a backyard mechanic type rebuild on it. The best job that I could do at the time when we got the F20. But you know, since I've been working with Rudy, I've learned a lot and I've also had the access to a lot of much better tools. So. Thank you, Rudy, as always, for, for letting me come over and use the sandblast cabinet and, and the other tools. Uh, we also rebuilt the carburetor for the case because it's been about you know, 15 years since that one was rebuilt. So I figured, well, what the heck, it's due. Might as well clean it out, put a new kit in it, and just be done with it so that it's ready to go for many years to come. So big shout out to Rudy for all, those, uh, all the help that he gave us. And then... I have a few more shout outs to give. Um, the Bronson family, who I actually, that's who we got the Minneapolis Moline from. They sent us a, a nice, very, very generous cash donation towards the, the H project. And not only did they send that, but they sent a koozie and a shift knob for the H. So I don't know if you guys can read this, but it says running in the red. So this is a really cool shift knob that's going to go on the H. Um, it resembles a piston, so it's got these O-rings up top to resemble the the, uh, the piston rings. But huge shout out to the Bronson family. Really appreciate that. Very generous of you to also send that uh, donation over for the H. So um, second, I got to give a big shout out to Richard, Stephanie, and Hollis down in Arkansas. Uh, Richard actually sent a couple t-shirts that his daughter Stephanie made for us and they're in the house right now but I'll show you guys those t-shirts later but they're really cool t-shirts and uh, we really appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if there's any other matching family set of t-shirts we have but um, definitely a first and they're definitely awesome so we really appreciate that and um, just wow. <laughs> You know, the amount of kindness that goes around is, is unbelievable. So, third, I want to mention Daniel and Davis in North Carolina. Uh, Daniel contacted me and he said that Davis, his young son, really loves the videos, really loves our channel. And um, he, he watches it prior to going to sleep on the weekends. So I'm not sure if our channel puts you to sleep, but if it does, that's great. <laughs> But um, huge shout out to you guys and, and to everybody for supporting the channel. And, um, you know, it's just, it's been a, it's been a rough couple weeks around here. So, you know, we're just, we all got to get through this stuff together. Whatever's going on, we got to get through it together. So let's, uh, I'm going to get these carburetors put on. I'm not going to film that part because it's, it's just, uh, this, this video is for the H. So we're going to get that hydraulic pump back together and um that's a video i've been i've been trying to get to you guys for two or three weeks and unfortunately that's about all we can do at this point is get that hydraulic pump together and 
you know everything's still at sandblast and i don't know if bill is working or not if he's been shut down since this whole shutdown has started and then the radiator actually was supposed to go up to um to glenn's shop up in uh, northern minnesota but he's also been um his business has been kind of suffering because of everything that's going on here so you know everything's kind of at a standstill with this virus that's going around but let's uh i'll turn the camera off here i'll get these carburetors on real quick and then we'll go up front and start working on that hydraulic pump all right all right guys we're back in the garage and we've got everything for the hydraulic pump laid out i've polished all the surfaces all the mating surfaces i've polished uh, the drive dog journal where it rides on the seal i've polished the shaft where the gear and bushings ride and i've also polished the journals on the drive gear itself and uh one of the things oh i also obviously coated the rough casting areas with the glip tall which is here uh, it's essentially i described it in one of my previous videos but it's essentially a uh, sealant that helps seal off the porous casting surfaces uh, for a couple reasons it allows better uh, drain back and flow of oil so it's not clinging to those porous surfaces and it also helps seal the porous surfaces in case there's any irregularities from the casting uh, so you're not getting seepage through the casting and or you're not getting any residual sand coming back through and getting into your system so that's essentially what the glip doll is for it's got a few other uses to it you know it helps transfer heat better and and things like that but <clears throat> or insulate i shouldn't say transfer it helps insulate um you know castings but uh one thing i wanted to talk about before we put this back together are these these check valve check valve ball and spring um uh, as you can see richard actually old farm junk 101 he sent us a entire bag of innards from this pump and i went through this bag and i went through everything that i've got out of this pump and i picked all the best items and um one of the things that I found from the original was this check ball here. If you can see, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but there's a lot of pitting in the area where it was seated. I don't think you guys can see that, but right where my thumbnail is, all the way around, there's a lot of pitting. You can see the irregularities, I think, but that is one thing that... Uh, causes these pumps to leak leak pressure and allow that creep down uh, same thing goes with your your pressure relief valve this is just another check ball but this one is very nice as well so i'm going to go ahead and use it um, these springs are also known to break and cause issues they can actually get jammed up inside your pump um, so that's one thing to check out. This one is very malformed when you compare it to new ones or to replacements. Uh, you can buy these springs new from Case International, but they're about $24 a piece. So something to keep in mind there. I do have a couple of extras here. Um, these are probably still good but i i went i chose to go with the ones that richard sent just because they seem to be in very good condition so um there's also a method that you can do to uh let's see here i gotta find it to lap the um seats inside this pump casting here, I guess you can call it the middle body, that's what I'm going to call it. Um, inside these two holes is where these these balls seat. So essentially, that's what allows the flow to either stop or go. And there are seats inside here, and you can lap these seats by taking one of these extra balls and welding a rod onto the end of it. 
and putting some lapping compound in here and then using it just like you would a valve lapping and it'll allow you to to lap those seats but i've i've shined a light down in here and these seats actually look very nice so i'm i'm just going to leave it alone and besides that i don't have a welder so i can't make that tool in order to lap it but let's go ahead and get started putting this thing back together um i'm kind of roughing it i don't have uh, my video at hand and the manual is inside i've looked at it a few times but it doesn't really detail how these go back together so i'm just going off of memory and um you're gonna have to bear with me on this but uh first thing that i've noticed is you have to put the check check valve balls and springs in first and then your pump body is going to go on or I'm, i should say your um your middle body i guess is what i called it before right so you can see your your check valves right here they're seating right against the the casting there's the the seats inside there and there's also a small seal behind those seats but like i said i'm just leaving that part alone because i don't have the means to do anything with that so from there we insert our drive gear and i've already installed the new seal in the back of the casting and i know a lot of guys are saying well you haven't greased it up yet well just give me a chance when we get everything put together here i'm going to flip it over and there'll be plenty of room to put grease in there so don't worry about that because this shaft is not making contact with the seal it's the drive dog itself which is a lot larger diameter than the shaft so we'll insert our our drive shaft we'll insert one bushing onto the intermediate shaft i'll call it our second make sure we get all the dust off there this stuff's been sitting a while so then we can insert our intermediate gear here slide that down now what i'm going to do is these pumps run on straight 30 weight so i'm just going to take and i got to build some prime in my pump here i'm just going to put a little bit of 30 weight inside here just because that way everything's not running dry <clears throat> so that's there and um let me think here let me look around make sure we've got everything there that's that's pretty much how that goes together um the next step is going to be to insert these small plungers into i'm going to call it the top plate of the pump but before i do that i want to clean up these shafts so let me do that on the wire wheel quick and we'll go ahead and do that and then we can close this up so it'll be done and then it's just a matter of figuring out where all these parts go so bear with me okay i'm just going to take and put a little bit of oil on the plungers whoop that's not what we wanted to do sorry squatch <laughs> okay our plungers are in place now the hard part i think well maybe not maybe not so hard I'm just going to put a little oil in this bushing here. Okay. Make sure everything's lined up. And then, let's see, our pump manifold, which is here, goes right on the back side of this portion and there are two through holes i believe it's these two that use the longer bolts so they go right through the casting and into the manifold so we'll put those in place 
And then we can put all the other ones in place. And there aren't any torque specs online or in the in the manual for these. So I'm going to give it the old uh, Guten tight measure. No, I'm kidding. Um, I'll uh, I'll look up the torque specs for this specific size bolt, and then we'll go from there. I'm pretty sure it's going to be like probably 60, 65 foot pounds, something like that. Just going off of what I've seen on other. Um, charts that I've looked up in the past and this should be uh, probably a 7 16th coarse thread so um, this piece here is to ensure that the bushing doesn't come out of this casting so make sure you get that back in place Okay, I'm just going to snug these down and then um, we'll, uh, we'll do the torque specs. But before we do that, before we torque them, I'm going to install this manifold on the back side. And um, just so you guys are aware, before I move on, uh, the hydraulic drive pump, countershaft, um, drive seal that goes around this drive dog on the pump side is a 13649 in the in the SKF brand. Um, and then the gasket is still available for the pump manifold from Case International and that's a 15070E. So let's uh, let's snug these down. I'll turn the camera off. We'll flip everything over, install the pump manifold and then we'll work on getting all the linkages and, and valves in place. Oh, I already forgot something. I got to go back. This, um, I'm pretty sure this is uh, some type of a, a valve. <laughs> I, I don't know the technical term for it. I should have the manual out here to tell you guys, but it goes inside this um, backing plate. So I'm going to have to back up a second, take it back off, and install this okay guys this valve can go two different ways in here but only one way is the correct way if you look this hole is not drilled in the center and the end that it's closest to gets inserted into the body first so i'm going to put a little bit of oil on here And insert it into the pump body make sure I work it back and forth a couple times just to ensure that the inside of the pump body has plenty of of oil on it so now we can go back and put this portion together There we go. All right, I'll put the bolts back in and we'll snug everything down and put the manifold on. Okay, we've got the manifold in place. I've got the gasket underneath there and I always use a little bit of uh, RTV gasket maker as a sealant. Um, again, I don't use much. I just put a little bit on my fingers and rub the gasket thoroughly through my fingers and get it coated just so it's tacky and then I lay the gasket down and apply whatever, you know, whatever I'm putting together. But this piece is on loosely, so you can see some of the gasket here, right on the edge there. So let's flip it over, tighten the bolts down, and uh, we'll torque everything down. And I believe these are half, all the bolts for the pump assembly are half 13. So it should be... Uh, somewhere between 60 and 80 foot pounds, probably. Uh, I'll double check that, but let's uh, let's flip this back over, get everything tightened down, and then we'll we'll start putting all the small pieces back. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is get the relief valve put into place, and that will be these parts here. So you've got your 
threaded portion, you've got your spring, which goes inside the threaded portion, and then you've got your actual follower, which I still need to polish and I'll do in a second. And then you've got your ball, your check valve ball that goes on the top or inside the casting here and it seats against that seat. So now that I forgot to polish this, let's do that. down a bit. There. Turn some quiet back on. So, spring inside the mechanism here, the valve, the relief valve. Slide on top of that spring. And we will actually put a little oil on here. Because a little oil goes a long way. Put a little oil on the check ball. I've got some on my fingers already. Oh. And now this is under pressure, so you're going to have to squeeze it together in order to get it started. Oh, and these bolts for the pump body are 57 foot-pounds, so I was really close. Let's thread it in by hand. And then there is a small cup that goes on the top side. Just slides on top like that. But before we install that, we're going to snug this down. And then we'll uh, move on from there. Okay, now we have to put the relief valve lever into place. Now before we do that, there's a really small spring that goes into a hole right here. So we insert that spring into the hole. Insert the pin. Oh, a little bit of oil. Oil on the pin. Compress the spring with the lever. Swing it over onto the pin, and then insert our cotter pin. Now these are the old cotter pins. I'm obviously going to use new ones, so we'll uh, get some new ones out of my case over on the wall here and keep going. Okay, well, this is why we make videos. <laughs> this did not, uh, I kind of did things out of order here. So the relief lever has to go on after this portion okay so now let me figure out the orientation here this lever here goes on to your relief valve or i should say your check valve plungers okay this has to go into place first and then we can put on our relief valve lever so we get that on Compress the spring on the back side. 
get it started on the shaft. Now we can insert our cotter pin, just like this. Okay, now we got that started. And from here, we can insert the pin. Let's put some oil on it. Insert the pin here, the spring goes here, and this is probably going to be a pretty tough, it has to go like this, and we have to compress the spring, I think we've got to insert the pin from the other side, actually, like this, maybe, <laughs> maybe. They sure don't make this easy, plus I'm moving the camera around on you guys, which isn't any better. There we go. Oh, I got screws falling off the wall. I'm just a mess today. This is what happens when you don't get to wrench very often. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to get a mallet and tap this through. Okay, be right back. Okay, now we're cooking with fire. We've got our shaft in place here, our cotter pin in place for the relief valve trip. We've got our shaft in place for the actuating lever itself with the spring cotter pins in place okay now the final piece is the shaft for the valve body itself okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna oh I gotta get a better grip on it there we go we're gonna set this in the back position and then we have to get inside the valve body and lift it up so that we can get the shaft through. So we can get the shaft through, push the shaft in, put our washer on the other side, which is essentially a spacer to keep the um, cotter pin from rubbing on the um, body itself. Let's see, I'm gonna to have to go through this way. Here we go. We got our cotter pin in place. We'll flip it around so we can trim it. Like this. I usually just snip the ends all with about a quarter, three-eighths of an inch extra, maybe a half inch. Fold it over. Now I fold both ends over. Um, some people just do one end. It's up to up to you how I want to do how you want to do it. But because these a lot of these pieces in here are so uh, close together and there's a lot of you know moving levers and whatnot. I'll fold them both over so that they're tucked And uh, they don't end up in the way somehow So we're together there and the last piece is the drive coupler on the other side so Make sure everything kind of 
operates correctly. There we go. Push it forward. Our pressure relief valves move appropriately. If we come in here, we can push them down with a screwdriver. Everything moves freely, beautifully. If we hit this, everything moves great there. Okay. All the shafts are oiled. The insides of the pump are oiled. Let's go ahead and flip it over. And we'll get some grease to put in here. Thread that drive dog on, and that should be it. Okay, we've got our drive dog all polished. We've got the seal all greased. Now, this is going to be oiled with, with straight 30 weight oil anyways, but I always like to put grease on it when we assemble it just for extra precaution, just for good measure. Okay. Now, if you remember, we have to lock the gears together in order to tighten this drive dog. So I've got a piece of flat stock down inside the pump pickup. It'll go directly to the gears. You wanna make sure you use a good square piece of flat stock, and then you can use a, a small square pry bar in here to tighten it. Otherwise you can use that tool that I made, which I'll show you. Looks like this. It's just a piece of bar stock welded to a nut. Fits right inside the slot here and you can tighten everything down. So you don't have to go overly tight because as this pump turns, it's going to tighten it anyways. So, all right. That's all we've got for this one. Um, give me a second, I'll tighten this down and we'll do our conclusion. Well guys, we got the pump back together. I got to apologize a little bit for my, my disorganization and uh, the fact that I had to actually refer back to my own videos on the disassembly of the pump to remember how it goes back together. But it's been apart for so long that, you know, I tend to forget a couple things here and there, which uh, the older I get, uh, more often it happens. But uh, I never used to have to look back on stuff and uh, to remember, but, you know, occasionally it happens, so it is what it is. But pump's back together. Everything's good to go. We've got the, uh, yeah, we've got the carburetors back on the F20, the Case SC, so hopefully here, whoops, sorry, pointed you straight into the light. Hopefully here we can get some, some test run videos of those and see how they sound. And, um, you know, I guess the other than this part here, the H is kind of at a standstill because, you know, we're waiting on the sandblasting and that's shut down and we're waiting on bringing the radiator up to the shop and that's currently shut down. So I'm thinking um, I'm probably going to start checking out that 1928 John Deere D just to give us something to do. So stay tuned for those videos because I want to get the rear wheels switched out so that we got the rear rear steel wheels put on. And in order to do that, I got to strip all the steel lugs off of the steel wheels. And um, then I wanted to get the radiator, the hood, all that stuff pulled off and get the head pulled off and have a look inside the cylinders to see how badly we are stuck. So that's all I've got. That's the hydraulic pump reassembly video. You know, a little bit of back and forth, but I appreciate your patience. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for wrenching and uh, stay tuned. Don't forget to check out that GoFundMe in the link below. If you can donate, great, uh, to the project for suicide awareness. Great. I know this. these times are very tough. They're tough on us too. So um, just everybody hang in there, all right? We're in this together and... Keep on, keep on keeping on. So we'll talk to you guys later.